automation has been into existence since the early 1950s, but has only started gaining recognition recently with robotic process automation being the key leader to it. There's no doubt in the fact that all kinds of organizations are automating the daily Monday tasks with the help of RPA skilled professionals. Hi guys, this is Sahiti on behalf of Edureka and I welcome you to this session on RPA projects. So in this session guys we will mainly focus on different kinds of projects related to RPA and then I'll show you how you can automate tasks using UI path and automation anywhere. So without any further ado, let's just get started with the session. So the topics for today's session are as you can see on my screen. We'll start the session by understanding what is robotic process automation and then I'll tell you what are the top tools in this field. After that, I'll just jump on to the main topic for today's session that is the different kinds of projects. So over here we'll be discussing the top 10 projects or top 10 RPA use cases. So out of the 10 of them, I'm going to show you how to really automate those tasks for five of them using UiPath and automation anywhere. So let's just get started with the session. So what do you think robotic process automation is? Well, robotic process automation is nothing but the process with the help of which robots mimic human actions to perform a sequence of steps and things can happen without any human intervention. So in the phrase robotic process automation, you mainly have to understand three terms that is robotic process and automation. So let's just understand each of these terms one by one so that you can summarize all these three terms together and you can understand what is robotic process automation. So starting with robotic. So robotic means any entities which mimic human actions. So any kind of entities which mimic human actions are nothing but robots. So robots are those entities which mimic human actions and with the help of which human intervention can be reduced in industries. After that comes process. So process is basically sequence of steps which lead to a meaningful activity. So as you just understood robots are entities which mimic human actions. To perform any task they have to follow a sequence of steps right. So that sequence of steps is nothing but the process and finally coming to the third term that is automation. Automation is any process done by a robot without any human intervention. So any kind of process either it be a simple process or a complex process in the industries any process that happens by a robot without any human intervention is said to be automated. Now if we combine all these three terms together then mimicking human actions to perform a sequence of steps that lead to a meaningful activity without any human intervention is nothing but robotic process automation. So I hope I'm clear with this point and you know what robotic process automation is. Now in today's industries robotic process automation is used in various kinds of fields and also we see that you know artificial intelligence is combining with robotic process automation to generate meaningful results and you know to reduce the human intervention completely. So with that note, let me just tell you that you know in the field of RPA industry physical robots do not work. So when I say physical robots do not work, what I mean by that is you know when you hear the term robotic process automation, anybody would just understand by the fact that you know maybe physical robots work like you know in a factory or they perform various kinds of tasks. But let me just tell you that in the field of robotic process automation, physical robots do not work, but it is with the help of RPA tools or RPA softwares through which you can create your own bots to automate specific tasks. The top RPA tools in the market today are UiPath, Blue Prism, and Automation Anywhere. Now, all these three tools have various functionalities and various specific features, which makes them grow in the market. Now, apart from these tools, also, there are hundreds of tools present in the market. But now, if you're looking forward to become an RPA developer, then definitely UiPath, Blue Prism, and Automation Anywhere are the top three tools that you can go through and start getting a hands on experience in these tools. Now, when I said that you know you gotta learn these tools and get hands on experience to become an RPA developer, I said that because these tools prospect in the market because of the user interface, vendor experience, and maintenance and support. Now, these are not only the functionalities of these tools, so there are n number of functionalities. So, you can go in depth of each tool and understand how they perform. So that was about the tools guys. So guys now that you know what is RPA and its tools. Let's get into the main topic for today's session. That is the top 10 RPA projects or the most common ways that RPA is used in today's industries. At number 10 we have updating CRM. So when I say updating CRM obviously any enterprise has a sales team where they have to update the customer contact details. So that particular task can be definitely automated using RPA. 
So the problems that you've seen in updating CRM is mainly that you know it is a time consuming job and then you know if we have to integrate the email call and other details to CRM it's almost next to impossible to a manual workforce to sit and work and put hundreds of contact details into the CRM right now apart from this this is also error prone because you know two customers may have the same name but yes they have different details like for example my name is Sahiti and then there's some other person whose name is also Sahiti right now if the manual team sits and then you know starts entering the details it may happen that you know they may just mix up my details and that person's details right so these kind of errors can be avoided when you just automate this task. So what you can simply do is that you know you can design a bot in any tool that you wish to update the CRM with the customer contact data at a scheduled time every day. So what I mean by that is let's just take a scenario where you have you know the name the email ID phone number date of birth and age of the customer. Now what you can do is that you know you can design a bot in such a way that you know it identifies the name of the customer and then searches for the name field in the CRM and fills it over there. Similarly, it identifies the email ID of the customer and fills it in the email ID field and the phone number age and date of birth and so on right after that what the bot can simply do is it can just you know click on the update button or maybe the enter button and just update the CRM and this task can happen repetitively every day right. So a human employee doesn't have to sit and work over there every day. What you can simply do is you can schedule the task so that you know automatically whatever new data has been entered into the database with the customer details can be automatically entered into the CRM or updated into the CRM. So basically you have to define the rules for the bot which data has to be updated in which fields right. So that's how guys you can basically update the CRMs. Next let's move forward to the next use case that is web scraping. Now all of you might have heard what's web scraping right so if I have to just you know make it simple for you then web scraping is basically you scrape data from a website and then you store it with yourself. Now web scraping can happen in many scenarios like you know you can scrape data from stock trading websites future trading websites commodities trading websites and so on apart from these you can also scrape websites from the e-commerce websites. So this is the most common use case of web scraping that you know you scrape data from an e-commerce website right. So now if you just see on a user's perspective or an individual perspective web scraping comes into use when you want to scrape the data and keep it to yourself right. So for example let's say you know I want to buy a phone and I want to buy an iPhone. So what I can do is that you know I can type iPhone in Flipkart and then whatever search results come I can just directly scrape the data and store it in an Excel or my database right. Now if you see the same scenario in a company based or in an enterprise based Obviously every company wants to understand the competition right. So to understand the competition what they can simply do is that you know they can just scrape the data of their competitors and then understand and analyze the data to benefit their own organization right. So that's how you can use RPA in web scraping. So performing web scraping is not that easy when you have large amount of websites and obviously when your website is not static. Now if you just imagine that you know a human employee sits and his sole job is to just basically store the data into an Excel file. So don't you think it's time consuming it is right apart from being time taken it also requires a lot of manpower and is error prone right. So to avoid all these kinds of stuff what you can simply do is you can just automate this task. So when you automate this task you can again create a bot or design a bot in such a way that you know it scrapes this required field. So for example let's say you're searching for a phone on a Flipkart website. Now phone can have n number of specifications right. So for example let's say we have name then we have the price we have rating and then we have customer reviews and so on right. Now what I want to scrape is just the name and the price. So you can just configure your board to just scrape the name and the price and store it in your Excel database. So next in this session I'm going to show you how you can scrape data. So our task is to scrape the number of GitHub repositories for the top technologies in today's market. Now to automate this task what I'll do is I'll use the tool UiPath. So I'm going to use the tool UiPath and then I'll show you how you can scrape the data. But before that let me just give you an overview of the complete workflow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to store the technologies in an Excel sheet and then I'm going to build a data table in the UiPath studio. After that I'm going to read the data from the Excel sheet and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the website and then record the actions. After that I'm going to design the step to write the extracted data into the Excel sheet and then I'll just execute this automation. So let's just shift back to my UiPath studio. So when you open your UiPath studio this is how it basically looks. So on the left hand side you have various kind of projects that you can create and then on the right hand side you have recent that is the basically recent projects that I have created. 
So what I'll do is I'll start with a new project. So click on process and then what I'll do is I'll just give a name to this project. Let's say GitHub repository script. Right, so there should be no spaces. So let me just remove the spaces. Right, and then I'll click on create. Once I click on create, you can see that you know my project is getting created. So let's just wait for that to happen. All right, so as you can see, this is how my UiPath Studio dashboard looks like. So I have various kind of activities on my left hand side. I have the output pane at the bottom. I have the properties pane at the right hand side, and I have the ribbon to perform various kinds of tasks. So now before I move on with how you can design steps in UiPath Studio, let me just open my Excel file and show you. All right, so as you can see, this is my Excel file that I'm going to consider. So over here, I've just put three technologies at present. So you can put any number of technologies that you want. I've just put three technologies because of the time constraint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape the data for Travis, Kotlin and Golang. So let me just shift back to my UiPath Studio now. And now what I'll do is I'll drag a flow chart first. Now I'm dragging a flow chart so that you know the flow is really clear to you. Now our first step is basically to read the data from the Excel sheet and then store it in the UiPath Studio so that you know it can perform the required actions, right? So for that, what I'll do is I'll drag and drop the build data table activity. Now I'll just double click this and then what I'll do is I'll just double click over here again and then I have to mention the name of the columns, right? So what is the name of the column that I've given over here? That is technologies and repository numbers. So let me just copy this and then I'll shift back. Now I'll click on the edit option over here. I'll paste this and then let's say, you know, max length is 100 because you know, we just have three technologies. So let's just keep the other specifications the same. So we are I've just mentioned the column name to be technologies and the data type to be string after that I'll click on OK. Now similarly I'll edit column 2 and then I'll go back copy this and just I'll paste it over here. I'll again change it to spring and then click on OK. These are the columns that I want to use that is the technologies and the repository numbers. Now what I'll do is I'll just remove this rows and click on OK. That means our data table has been created. Now what you have to do is you have to mention the output variable. So when I say output variable, what I want to do is basically whenever the data is getting read from the Excel sheet, it has to be stored in a variable, right? So that's what I'm going to create over here. So let's just go to the output section over here. Press on control K and let's say I mentioned the variable to be GitHub table. So that is basically my variable that I've created. Now what I'll do is I'll go back to the flow chart and then I'll connect the starting point to the build data table activity. Next what I'll do is I'll drag the Excel application scope. So this is basically the activity through which you're going to read your Excel file. So to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click over here and then I'll mention the path of the workbook. So I'll just browse and let's say we go to desktop and then we choose technologies. So now what you've done is you've just given the part of the workbook from which the data has to be read, right? So now you have to basically read the data. So for that you'll search for read range activity and drag and drop it over here. Over here you'll mention the sheet number and the range, right? So if you go back to your Excel sheet, you can clearly see that, you know, we just have one sheet that is sheet one. And then, you know, let's just give the range to be infinite so that any number of rows that you ever increase will also be read. So over here, I'll just mention sheet one and infinite. Now in the output section of the read range activity, you have to mention the data table variable that you just created. That's because you know it has to read the data, right? So over here, I'll just search for GitHub table and then I'll mention it over here. Now I'll go back to the flow chart and then what I'll do is I'll connect the build table to the Excel application scope. So until now, what you have done is you've designed the actions to read the data from the Excel file. Now what you have to do is you have to basically design the actions so that you know the data is entered into the website and the required data is searched, right? So for that what you'll do is you'll drag a sequence first and let's say you know I rename it to web recording and then I'll just connect this sequence to the Excel application scope double click over here and then what I'll do is I'll first drag and drop the open browser activity. So I'll just search for open browser activity. And then I'll mention the URL in which you know we wish to search. 
So let's just first search for my Internet Explorer. I searched the GitHub website and then I put the URL. So I'll search for GitHub.com and then I'll just search. I'll just give an enter over here. So for example, let's say you know we search for Travis. Right. So when I search for the Travis results, you can see that you know these are the repository results, right? So we basically want to extract this data and store it in a file. So for that, I'll go back over here and basically what I'll do is I'll remove this and then I'll refresh this website and then I'll copy this and then come back over here, put double quotations and mention my URL over here. You put double quotations basically to identify it as a string. So any string that you enter in UiPath Studio has to be put in double quotations. Now once you've mentioned the GitHub search URL, you have to first drag the attach browser activity in the do section of this activity. So I'll just search for attach browser activity. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to indicate on the screen. So before that you have to make sure that you know this is your immediate screen after UiPath Studio. So I'll go back over here and indicate over here. So that means I've indicated on the screen. Next, what you have to do is you have to basically design few actions so that they happen in a repetitive manner. For that, you basically have to design loop. So since we are using a data table, I'm going to use the for each row loop. So for that, I'm going to search for for each row over here, drag and drop it over here. Now, what I'll do is I'll mention the data table name over here. So for each row in our data table, what I want to do is I want to perform a set of actions. So I'll mention for each row in our data table. I have to first assign the technology name from the Excel sheet to a variable so that that can be searched in a URL. So for that I'll drag the assign activity and then what I'll do is I'll create a variable over here. So I'll press on control K and let's say I mentioned technologies and then in the variable section what I'll do is I'll mention this particular row, right? So this is basically row 0 row 1. So over here we want to convert row 0 to string and then identify the string assign it to a variable and then that particular data in the variable has to be searched, right? So I'll mention row 0 to string. Next what I'll do is I'll drag the delay activity. Now I'm dragging the delay activity to avoid any errors like you know the website is saying that you know we have detected an abuse mechanism and so on because we are automating this task. So I'll just drag and drop this delay activity and then let's say you know we mentioned the duration to be 30 seconds. So I'll just mention 30 seconds. Now after that what I have to do is I have to basically indicate where it has to basically search, right? I have to basically enter the text over here that it's a select the screen. So for that what I'll do is I'll drag the set text activity and then I'll basically indicate the element on the screen. Right? So this is where I want to search. So I'm going to indicate on the screen. On the search bar I've just indicated and in the text I'll mention the technologies variables. So basically our data stored in the technologies has to be searched in the search bar. That is basically where you have identified. Now again, I'll drag a delay activity. Let's say you know five seconds. Now after that what you do is basically when you search you press on enter, right? So either you can choose the hotkey to press on enter or you can indicate the mouse element to click on the search button. So I'm just going to choose to press on enter. So for that what I'll do is I'll search the send hotkey activity. And then what I'll do is I'll mention the key. So let's just search for enter. Until now what is going to happen is that you know the data extracted from the Excel sheet is going to be searched on the specific URL that you mentioned and then automatically data is going to be entered into the search bar and then the enter will be pressed. After that let's add a delay activity again and then I'll mention 30 seconds. So that we avoid any errors. Now once you know the data has been entered and the page has been loaded our next step is to extract the repository results, right? So for that what I'll do is I'll search for get text activity. I'll drag and drop it over here. And then I'll indicate the element inside the browser. So let's just say we search for Travis and then I'm going to indicate this particular element, right? So I'll just go back over here choose indicate element and choose this particular text. So that's how you can basically choose. So if you choose edit selectors, you'll clearly see that you know you have CSS selector where you can just indicate the element and then you can make sure it is validated. So you can see minus validated. So I'll click on OK. Now what I'll do is basically I'll assign the extracted text basically that is our repository results to one more row into the Excel sheet that is basically in the row one. So for that what I'll do is I'll go back to my assign activity and mention row one 
and over here I'm going to mention repository results. So I'll just mention rep count and over here what I'll do is I'll mention the output variable to be rep count. Basically all our output is getting stored in the first row of our Excel file. So until now you basically designed the actions to extract the data from the Excel files and then search for the repository results and assign it to the row one of the Excel sheet. Now what you have to do is you have to basically write the data, right? So for that you'll go back to the flow chart and then I'll search for right range. I'll drag and drop the right range activity. Let's just connect the web recording to right range. I'll double click over here and then I'll mention the workbook path. So let's say we put it in the same path. So I'll just go for desktop and search technologies and let's say you know we create a new sheet so that there's no confusion. I'll mention sheet 2 and let's say you know we want to store the data from let's say A2 cell. So I'll mention A2 and then I'll mention the data table name over here. So over here I'm just going to delete this part of Q so that there's no error. I'll save this then close this file go back to the flow chart. And now let's just execute the stars. So before executing the stars, please make sure that you know your Internet Explorer is closed and then your file is also closed. So now what I'll do is I'll just click on debug. You'll see that you know the execution has started, right? Until the execution gets finished, let me just cover the flow for you again. So what we did was basically that you know we read the data from our Excel file that in which you know all the technologies were stored. After that what we did was we opened our UiPath studio created a blank project and then we created a data table with the same column names basically the same columns the number of columns that our Excel sheet had. After that what we did was you know we created a variable for our data table. After that we added an Excel application scope where we read the file of our Excel workbook mentioned the sheet name and the range and then we connected it to a sequence which had all the actions related to the web scraping. So as you can see there's an error because you know this is coming Travis enter that means you know our send hotkey was wrongly written. So I'm just going to abort this execution over here and then I'll just go back to my web recording go back to send hotkey and then what I'll do is I'll search for the enter key right. So let's just search. Now I'll just save this task and then I'll just open technologies close it over here again and then I'll just debug this task again. So as you can see automatically my file opened the github website also opened now in a while you'll see that you know automatically the data is getting searched over there. So let's just wait for that to happen. So as you can see Travis got searched it repository results open and then you'll see that you know the repository results are getting extracted. Similarly the next technology was Scotland. So let's just wait for that to happen again. All right, so as you can see our execution has completed. So that means our data has been scraped and it has to be stored in our Excel file, right? So let me just shift back and open our Excel file. So over here you can see that you know we have sheet 2 and that particular sheet has a list of our technologies and the respective repository results. So that's how guys basically you can automate the task of web scraping. So over here I just showed you for three technologies you can put any number of technologies that you want and then you can scrape the data for it. Now this was basically to understand the number of repositories in GitHub to work on any technologies. Well you can scrape data from any platform that you wish to. Now let's move forward with our list and let's look at the next use case that is validating orders. Now hundreds of online orders take place every day on different mediums such as Amazon, Flipkart, Dominus and so on right. Now all of you might be ordering on a daily basis. Now how do you think that each order is validated against the shipment? Do you know how that happens? Well you know obviously there can be companies who use the manual workforce to check whether the order is validated against the shipment or not. Now obviously if a human employee sits and validates each order against the shipment it is obviously time taking right. It's not that easy to work on daily basis and then just simply validate orders right. It might sometimes happen that you know there can be n number of problems that can come like you know the order is not correctly validated or maybe the shipment has not been received and so on right. 
So errors can definitely happen while storing data. So what you can do is you can just automate this task. So to automate this task, you can just design a bot to create to check and approve all the matching orders and notify the user whenever there is an exception raised. So for example, let's say you know I have ordered a phone from Amazon, right? For example, let's say the phone has not been received yet, but yes, the Amazon website says the shipment has been delivered. Now it may happen that you know maybe there's an error from Amazon side. So how do you think you can just validate the orders? They can simply just design a bot to check whether the order has been received or not. If the order has been received, then the bot can just ask for a confirmation from the user. And if the user says that you know yes, I've received the shipment, then there's no exception raised. But yes, if he says no, I haven't, and you know there are so many problems, then obviously the bot can notify the Amazon support team where you know they can check into it, right? So basically, you can just validate orders like this. So that was about validating orders, guys. So now validating orders can happen in any kind of industry. Either it be a user validating a simple order, or it be a complete enterprise validating different clients' requirements, or maybe different kinds of orders. Everything happens on a day-to-day -day task, right? So you can just automate this mundane task in various kinds of ways. I just showed you an example of you know where the bot can just check and approve all the matching orders. Well, this is not the only example. You can just design the bot as you wish to. Now let's move forward with our next use case, that is data migration and entry. Now with humongous amount of data being generated every day. It is almost next to impossible for a human employee to sit and enter the data into databases on a regular basis. Instead, the intelligence of the manual workforce can be used in a better way to benefit the organization. Now, as we know, legacy systems perform important functions for multinational companies on a day-to-day -day basis. These systems may have dependency issues to pull the required data from the APIs. Apart from that, if the manual workforce sits and just enters the data into an Excel file or a database or any kind of database that your you or your enterprise uses, it's you know it's kind of time taking and it's error prone and it's obviously you know it's just a mundane task. So instead, you can just automate this task and then make sure you mention what data has to be entered in which field. So when you automate this task, what you can simply do is that you know you can design a bot to migrate the data from various applications and store it in a database. Now these applications can be all your enterprise based or maybe you know you want to scrape the data and then analyze the data and then whatever data has been analyzed you want to store it in an Excel or a DBA. You can definitely do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how data migration and entry can be done. So for that I've considered a scenario where our task is to extract data from Excel file according to some condition and store it in another Excel file. So to do this what I'm going to do is I'm going to use automation anywhere. So before I open automation anywhere and get started with showing you the workflow, let me just give you an overview of our workflow. So initially what we're going to do is we're going to design the steps to open the spreadsheets and then start the loop where we're going to mention the condition based on which data from the first spreadsheet has to be stored into the second spreadsheet. After that, I'm going to mention the positioning of the active cells. So basically what data has to be entered in which field and then finally execute the automation. So let's just get started with it. So this is how basically guys your client looks like now. I'll just go to new go to workbench and let's just wait for it to open. So this is how basically your workbench looks like over here. You have various kind of activities and then this is your basically dashboard where you can work on it. Now initially what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my spreadsheets which I'm going to consider. So let me just open those spreadsheets. So as you can see on my screen, this is the company's data set. That is basically our first spreadsheet from where the data has to be extracted and then it has to be stored over here. That is basically I'm going to store the data from one spreadsheet to another spreadsheet based on some specific conditions. So this is my output data set. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just shift back to my automation anywhere client and let's just start automating this task. So initially as I told you before, you have to design the step to open the spreadsheets. So I'll search for the Excel command over here and then drag and drop the open spreadsheet command over here. Now over here, I'll mention the spreadsheet part. So initially I want to open my first data that is basically from where the data has to be extracted. That was my company's data set. So I'll drag and drop it over here and then mention save. Similarly, what I'll do is I'll drag and drop another open spreadsheet and then what I'll do is I'll mention the session name to be default one so that you know it is identified as another spreadsheet and then I'll mention the output data set. And click on save. Initially, I have to get all the cells from the first database, right? So, for that, what I'll do is I'll search for the get cells action over here, drag and drop it over here, mention the session name to be default, 
and then what I'll do is I'll choose this option of get all cells and click on save. So what I'll do is I'll drag and drop it over here. So initially what's happening is I'm opening the spreadsheet that is the first spreadsheet and I'm getting all the data from the first spreadsheet. After that I'll open the second spreadsheet that is basically where I have to store the data. Now what you have to do is you have to start a loop to iterate few actions, right? So for that I'll search for loop over here and then what I'll do is I'll drag and drop this each row in an Excel data set for that is because you know we want to perform specific set of actions for each row in our first Excel file, right? So for that we are mentioning this and then I'll click on save over here, right? So this will basically start my loop now what you have to do is you have to mention the conditions, right? So let's just say we open this database and then let's say you know we want to mention the conditions for the value column for the country column and the parent company, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just count this number of columns so that we can mention this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? So our seventh column is country, eighth column is value, and the tenth column is the parent company. We're going to mention the conditions for that. So what I'll initially do is I'll go back to my automation email client and then I'll drag an if else loop. So in the if else loop, basically I'll drag the variable subcommand and over here I'll basically edit the condition. So over here I'll basically mention the Excel column variable. So that is basically a predefined variable in Automation Anywhere Workbench. So I'll press on Control F2 and then search for Excel column. Click on Insert and then I'll mention the value of the Excel column. So let's say you know initially we're going to define it for the value column, right? So that was our eighth column. So I'm going to mention eight over here and click on OK. Now after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide an operator that is basically to specify the condition. So let's say in the value column we say that you know we want to extract the data of all those rows whose value is greater than let's say 50 lakhs. So what I'll do is I'll just go back over here mention greater than operator and let's say I mentioned 50 lakhs and then I'll click on save. Now this is our first condition mentioned. Now similarly let's mention the other conditions also that is basically our parent company and the country. So again I'll drag and drop the if else loop over here. And then go to edit over here, choose variable, and then I'll press on control F2, choose Excel column, click on insert, and then let's say you know we put country that is basically our seventh column, and click on OK. And let's say you know we make it equal to operator, and let's say we choose the country to be USA, right? So it has to be USA over here. So I'll mention USA and click on save. Now similarly let, let's drag and drop another condition click on edit press on control F2 mention Excel column click on insert. Let's say we mentioned the tenth column that is basically a parent company. Let's say equal to. And let's say we mentioned Google right so I'll just type in Google over here click on save. Now basically what will happen is from our first database all the data would be extracted which matches all our three conditions. So next what you have to do is you have to iterate this loop the number of times the columns are present. So we have around 10 columns present in this particular database. So what I'll do is I'll just go to the loop option. Then go to times drag and drop it over here. Mention 10 click on save and then what I have to do is I basically have to write the data into our second spreadsheet. So for that what I'll do is I'll go to the Excel command and then what I'll do is I'll drag and drop the set cell command. Now over here I'll mention the active cell and then let's say we mention the cell value to be Excel column. That is basically our first column and then we mention the counter variable so that you know the Excel column is counted. So basically in our first column when the counter is one the data would be stored from the first column of our first spreadsheet into the output data set. And then we'll make sure that you know the session name is default one because we want to store it into our second spreadsheet and click on save. Now once the data has been entered into our first spreadsheet the next step is to move to the right. So basically for example let's say you know data has been entered into this particular value. Now what you have to do is you have to move to the next column right. So for that what you'll do is you'll go back over here drag go to cell and then what you'll do is you'll choose the option of one cell to the right and click on save. Now what will happen is that you know if you leave the loop over here it will basically keep going one cell towards the right. But what we want is after a while once the cursor comes over here at the parent company column what we want to do is we want to go one row below and go to the beginning of the row again to start filling the column. So for that you again have to go back to the Excel command. So I'll go back over here 
and then I'll choose go to cell and say one cell below and then again I'll drag and drop go to cell. Let's say beginning of the row. So this is how basically you can mention few conditions and then you can extract the data, right? So basically let's just save this task now. Let's say I mentioned data migration and entry and click on save. Now I'll just execute this particular task. But before that, let me just close this and let me make sure that you know my active cell is an A2 cell and then I'll click on run. So once it is executing, you'll automatically see that you know the first database that is a company's database has opened and then the data is getting extracted. So what you initially saw that you know we had the column names, but what happened was that you know the data started getting filled from the first cell itself, right? So as you saw the data got automatically filled, but yes, it started for the first cell that is a1 cell. If you want the column names to be present and then you want to make sure that you know data is getting from a2 cell, then you can mention the cursor to move to the a2 cell first and then you can iterate this loop. So that's how guys basically you can migrate data from one database to another database based on specific conditions. Well, this was just between two Excel files. You can do it from between two applications or maybe from an application to database from one database to hundreds of databases and so on. So that was about this particular demo guys. Now before I move on with the next use case, let me just tell you one thing over here. When I was choosing this column of you know Excel column 10 equal to basically our condition. What you saw was I chose the option of fix, right? For example, let's say we choose variable then we have to add more conditions. So for that what I'm going to do is I'm not going to edit this part, but I'm going to edit the value part over here. So I'm going to go back to the eighth column one go to variable. Let's say add more conditions and then we can make sure we mention a variable over here or maybe you know we add values over here. So you can either add a value or a variable over here. So what I'm going to do is before I edit this particular part, I'll go back to my variable manager and I'll go to add over here. Let's say we add variable one and then I mentioned the value to be 50 lakhs. Click on save. Now again, I'll add another variable. Let's say I mentioned it to be 70 lakhs. I'll click on save over here. Now I'll go back to this condition. Go to variable over here. Go to add more conditions and then I'll choose match all. I'll mention the variable one over here. I'll press on control F2 choose variable one click on insert. Similarly, I'll mention the same condition for this. Let's say less than and then we mention variable two. I'll click on run. So all the data of having the value greater than 50 lakhs less than 70 lakhs and then also have the country to be USA and the parent company to be Google are stored. Now as you can see there were no data getting stored that is basically because you know maybe there was no condition matching over here. So I'll just edit the condition so that it's more clear to you guys. So I'll just go to this part and then I'll edit over here. So let's say you know I make it a random number click on save. I'll run this task again and let's wait for it to happen. So as you can see the data is getting entered right. That's how guys you can basically play around with conditions and variables based on however you want to store the data. So I'm just waiting for it to execute and once it executes we'll just stop this automation and then we'll move forward with the next use case. Right. So as you saw the data has got entered. So that's how basically guys you can perform data migration and entry. Now let's move forward with our next use case that is call center operations. Now call center operations are like one of the most popular operations that happen all over the world in every company, right? Almost all the companies have call center operations for various kind of operations like you know review, maybe feedback, maybe you have some few issues with their products then they can solve for you and so on. Now call centers would definitely like to have all the information about the customer on a single screen instead of looking into different applications to gain access about various kinds of details. So for example, let's say you know you're talking to a person from call center. Now if the customer details are spread over hundreds of applications, I'm the customer and then let's say you know my name is mentioned in a specific database and the details about the product that I bought are mentioned in some other application and then maybe problem or a ticket I previously issued was in some other application and so on. Now this is obviously time taking and the person sitting at the call center cannot coordinate within all those actions. So what you can do is you can design a bot at any kind of tool like you know UI path blue prism or automation anywhere and then the bot basically can put all the required information of a customer at a single place to get it at a ease for the call center people and also the bot can use the machine learning capabilities that you define with the help of algorithms to suggest the user with recommendations right. 
So for example, let's say, you know, you have a problem with your product then the call center person will have automated response to it. Like, you know, what is the product or what was the product details or the order ID and so on, right? So that's how guys basically you can automate this task of call center operations. Now let's move forward with our next use case that is email query processing. Thousands of emails get generated every day which need to be segregated so as to ensure that proper replies are sent to all the senders in the organization. Now any email ID gets thousands of emails, right? Especially if you're working in an enterprise, then the complete day goes with emails, right? Now, how do you think that, you know, you can segregate all the emails such that, you know, you can perform any kind of tasks like, you know, all the emails which have, let's say, at the rate edureka.co at the end must be sent an automated reply or maybe, you know, all the emails which have the subject, let's say ticket XYZ, then have to be sent specific reply and so on. Now the problem is that a manual workforce cannot sit and segregate each and every mail as humongous amount of emails get generated every day. Apart from this, it is also quite obvious that you know, it is a quite tiresome job and cannot be done by a single employee or a team. To avoid such problems, industries can just simply automate this task by segregating common issues or emails into specific folders. So basically you can design a bot in any of the tool in such a way that you know the bot identifies the email IDs and automatically moves the emails to specific folders in your emails. So now what I'm going to do next in the session is that I'm going to show you how you can automate the same task. So what I'm going to do is I have already a few predefined folders in my mail. So my task is to basically identify the email IDs and automatically move the respective emails into the folder. So let me just open my mail and show you. So as you can see on my screen, this is basically my email ID. Now I have few predefined folders like Edureka, Indicube and Medium. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the emails from over here. So whichever have at the rate edureka.co in their sender address, I'm going to design an automation which automatically moves the mail from the inbox to this particular folder that is the Edureka folder. So the same goes for the Indicube and the Medium. So whichever have at the rate indicube.com or medium.com, automatically those emails will be pushed into this particular folders. So now let's just shift back to my UI path studio. I'll go back to start. Let's create a new process. I mention it email query and then I click on create. So now as you can see our project has opened. So now before I start with the execution of the workflow, let me just give you an overview of the workflow. So what I'll do is I'll first drag the get outlook mail message activity through which I'll define what all mails have to be read. that is basically how many mails have to be read. After that what I'll do is I'll basically start a loop that is basically for each mail that is being read the sender address has to be identified right. So for that what I'll do is I'll drag a for each activity and then I'll assign the sender address to a variable and then I'll split the address. So basically I'll split it before at the rate and after at the rate. So what we basically want is after add rate, whatever is there, it has to go to the specific folder. For example, let's say we have edureka.co. Then all those emails having add rate edureka.co should be moved to the edureka folder, right? So that's what we're going to do. So for that, you'll have to define an if clause. So I'm going to do that. So let me just shift back to my UI path studio now. And then let's just drag a flow chart. And now what I'll do is I'll drag a sequence. And now what I'll do is initially I'll drag the get outlook mail messages activity. So I'll drag and drop it over here. And then what I'll do is I'll double click over here and then I'll mention what all has to be read. I have to read all the mails from the inbox folder and then once it is read, I can just mark them as read. And I can also mention the fact that you know only unread messages have to be read. So all the read messages will not be read. And let's say we do it for top 50. So I change it to top 50 over here. And then what you have to do is all the retrieved emails have to be stored in a list. So for that I'll create a variable. Let's say messages. So that is basically the variable that I've created. So when you see the data type of this variable, you can clearly see that you know it is a list of all the mail messages. Now what has to be done is basically have to start a loop that is for every mail you have to do a specific set of actions. So for that you drag for each activity. You drag and drop it over here and then you mention for each messages and in the item section basically you have to change the type argument from object to system.net.mail message. So I'm going to search for that system.net mail and then we'll search for mail message. 
I'll click on OK over here and then I'll mention for each mail in the messages that is basically for each mail in the main messages. I have to identify a few conditions and based on the conditions I have to move the emails to the folders. So for that what I'll do is I'll drag the if else loop. So I'll drag and drop the if else loop in the body activity. But before that I have to initially identify the address right. So for that what I'll do is I'll first drag the assign activity before the if else loop create a variable for address. Let's say address that is basically for the sender address and then we want to split this address right. Let's say we create a variable for address. So that is address over here and then you have to assign the sender address to this particular variable. So for that what you'll do is for each mail you're going to decide sender address. So for every mail the senders address would be assigned to this particular variable that is address. Now what you have to do is you have to split the address. Let's say my email ID is sahithi at edureka.co. So I have to split the address in such a way that you know if the condition matches for edureka.co then an email that I have sent will be automatically moved to the edureka folder. So for that what I'll do is I'll have to split the address before at the rate and after at the rate. So when I say before at the rate what I mean by that is I'm going to drag and drop the assign activity over here and let's say we mentioned split. We mentioned the variable that is address over here. And then we mention at the rate. I'm going to assign it to a variable. So I'll press on control K. And let's say we mention it to be split address. So basically until now what we have done is we have read all the emails that is basically we have defined the loop for top 50 emails and then only the unread emails will be read and they'll be then marked as read. And then what we've done is all the sender address for each and every mail would be automatically stored into a variable that is address. After that we have to define to split the address that is before at the rate and after at the rate. Now once you've done that you basically have to mention your condition. So over here I'm going to show you for three folders that is edureka, indicube and medium. So what I'm going to do is all the mails that I get from at the rate edureka.co will be moved to the edureka folder. Similarly goes for medium whichever mails come from medium.com will be moved to medium and similarly for indicube. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mention the condition. So split address one is equal to and then I'll mention edureka.co. So what's happening over here? Why did I mention split address one? Well when you divide address into two parts that is before at the rate and after at the rate automatically the before at the rate part gets stored in split address zero that is the zeroth value of the array and after at the rate values get stored in split address one. So basically by that I mean that you know the split address is an array of string. So I'm just going to convert it to array of string over here and click on OK. So basically in a string of arrays array zero value will be before at the rate and the value after at the rate will be stored in the first element of the string array. So we have mentioned our condition for edureka.co. Now if the condition matches what we want to do is we want to move the variable to a folder. So for that you have to search for the option move outlook mail messages right. So if our condition matches then we have to move to the outlook folder. So over here I'll mention messages and then over here I'll mention the folder name that is edureka. So that is because you know I have the folder name edureka over here. So now this was for edureka.co. Now let's say you know our first mail matches edureka.co but the second mail doesn't it goes for indicube. So then you have to define the conditions for it also right. So the same conditions matter again. You again have to drag an if else loop and then you have to mention the conditions. So I'll just copy from here paste it over here and let's say we mention indicube.com. Now if our condition matches then we want to move the message. So I'll just drag the move outlook mail message activity over here mention messages and then mail folder I'll mention indicube right. So I'll just search back over here mention indicube in quotes. Now similarly I'm going to do that for medium also. So I'll just drag and drop an if else clause again then mention the condition. So I'll just copy this paste it over here right and then I'll mention medium.com. Now again I'll search for move outlook mail message activity drag and drop it over here type in messages and mention the mail folder to be medium. So I'll mention medium over here 
Now let's consider the scenario that you know we have some mail ID which doesn't match these three conditions. Let's say you know it's not from edureka.co or indicube.com or medium.com. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to define all those mail to automatically move to another folder. So let's say you know I have this others folder over here. So I'm just going to move it over there. So I'm just going to drag move outlook mail message activity again over here. Mention messages and over here I'll just mention others. Now over here if you observe I just did a mistake. What do you think that is? Well, we defined a loop for each mail in messages, right? But yes, we mentioned conditions over here for all messages. That means the loop will not work. Instead, we have to mention mail over here, right? So I'll just mention mail so that you know the loop works because you know we have to iterate the loop for all the mails present in the messages, right? So it's not messages that has to be present over here. It has to be mail, right? So I'll just mention mail over here and then change it over here also. So guys with this we finish our designing part of our automation. So I'll just move back to our mail. So you know I have few emails as red. So I'll just mark them as under so that you know you, you can check if it's working or not. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back over here and then I'll just execute right. So I'll just click on debug. Oh I'm sorry. I forgot to connect the flowchart. So I'll just connect this flowchart over here and then we see few errors. So let's just see what errors are there. Oh yes, it says that you know I've mentioned two of them. So I'll just remove this spelling mistake one. I'll click on OK and then you see the error has been resolved. So I'll, then I'll click on debug and once I click on debug you'll see that you know the automation has started. So as you can see all the emails are getting read one by one. So let's just wait for it to finish. All right, so you can see that you know our email query has been executed. That means automatically all the emails must be put in few folders. So let's just see if that has happened. All right, so as you can see automatically the emails have come into the folders like you know edureka in the cube medium and many emails have gone to others. So basically all the emails which had the email ID edureka.co have come over here indicube.com have come over here medium has either at medium.com mail messages and others have all the random ones. So guys this was an execution of a simple demo on how you can segregate your emails. Now you can use this in a large scale industry in such a way that you know Maybe you want to segregate the emails first and then based on that you want to send automated replies to all those emails. So you can just extend this automation to that part also. So that part I'm going to leave it to you guys so that you explore. Well if you have any further queries with that part please let us know and then we will definitely help you out with that. So with that note let's move forward with our next use case that is HR operations. Now human resource operations is one of the most popular use case of RPA because the HR teams always has a lot of work like you know the paperwork where they have to perform tasks like you know candidate sourcing checking the histories of employees talent acquisitions and so on. Now all these tasks can be automated to a certain extent. For example let's say candidate sourcing. So maybe it can happen that you know there is a particular exam based on which a company hires people. So what you can do is you can design a bot to basically automatically store the results of all the candidates for the exam and then segregate them around like you know who are qualified for the next round or maybe who are rejected and so on. Same goes for the employment history verification where you can validate whether the history is right or not. The talent acquisition team can definitely use RBA because they have to search a lot on which candidates are applying for the companies and then how the team can make sure that you know the proper candidates enter into the company right. So for that uh, note they can have few validation certificates based on which they can acquire talents and similarly goes for the other operations where the HR comes into play. So basically all these tasks can be automated with any tool that you wish to and then you can automate them in a way that you want. So that was about HR operations guys. Now let's move forward with our next use case that is invoice processing. Now how many of you think that you know invoice processing is the most common use case of RPA? Most of you might have right? Well that is because you know all the companies generate invoices either order invoice or maybe car rental invoice maybe receipts. There are hundreds of kinds of invoices that can be generated in humongous amounts. Now each and every day thousands of invoices get generated. How do you think a company just extracts the data from those invoices and stores them in their database for a track record? Well, if our manual workforce team says this is obviously quite problematic, it will take them time, it will take them money, and it is definitely error prone, right? So maybe the data can be lost also sometimes, you know, if there's some crash in the system of the databases and so on. Well, to resolve these issues, what you can simply do is you can design the bot in the top RPA tools with whose sole responsibility will be to read the data from the invoices and store them in the databases. 
So over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to read the data from various invoices and store them in an Excel file. After that, I'm also going to show you how an email can be automatically sent after the file is getting stored. Now this particular task can definitely be scheduled in further also, but yes, today I'm not going to schedule it because I'm going to show you how you can do it step by step. After that, you can practice this task and then you can schedule it for yourself. So let's just do the same. So before I move on with the workflow, let me just give you an overview of the workflow. So I'm going to use tool automation anywhere over here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to first open my automation anywhere client and then I'm going to create the variables for the desired data. After that, I'm going to choose the values which have to be extracted and then mention the Excel file which needs to store the data. Finally, I'm going to choose the cells within which you know we wish to store the data. For example, let's say we have five fields. We want to store specific data into respect cells, right? So that's what I'm going to define. And then what I'll finally do is I'll mention the email ID to whom the email should be sent with the Excel file as an attachment. Finally, I'll just execute this automation. So let's just do the same. So I'll go back to my automation anywhere workbench. Now I'll go to new and then what I'll do is I'll just close the stars of data migration. Now before I move forward with the activities over here, let me just open the sample PDF and then I'll also show you the output data set. So what I'll do is I'll just open the sample invoices folder. Let me just open any invoice. So basically we have a car rental receipt that is basically our invoice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract the date receipt from amount form payment receipt number payment mode and receipt file. So for each of these invoices, I'm going to extract all these details and store it in a data file, right? So basically that data file would be our Excel sheet. So let's say I consider the Excel sheet invoice output. So as you can see, it's a blank screen. That means, you know, there's no predefined data which was already present. I'm going to use this particular Excel sheet to store all the extracted data from the invoices, right? So now I'll just shift back to my automation anywhere client. And then what I'll do is I'll just define the step to first open the spreadsheet. So I'll just drag and drop open spreadsheet over here. And then I'll mention the spreadsheet part that is basically our invoice output. After that, what I have to do is I have to basically define from which cell the data has to be stored, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mention the step of you know going to a specific cell also. So I'll just go to the option of go to cell and then I'll mention a2. So basically our storing of data will start from the a2 cell and then what I'll do is I'll open this PDF files. So for that let me just show you that you know I've put all the invoices in a specific folder. So I'm going to run a loop for each file in a folder. I'm going to have a set of actions. So I'm going to mention that particular activity for each file in a folder. So I'll go to the loop option and then I'll drag for each file in a folder. What I want to do is I want to browse. I'm going to choose sample invoices folder because that is the folder that I want to use. And then what I'll do is I want to perform a set of tasks. So those set of tasks is basically to extract data from those invoices and store them in a Excel sheet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the PDF integration command. And then I'm going to drag the sub command of extract form fields over here. I'm going to mention a PDF name. So let's say, you know, I mentioned the first PDF name initially click on open. Now after that you have basically have to insert fields. So I'll just click on add and then you can start adding fields. But since we haven't added any variables over here, what you can simply do is first we'll create variable and then we can edit this section. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that part, right? And then I'll go to the variable manager go to add and then I'm going to add the variables for all the data that I want to extract. So we are let's say we want to extract the date received from amount for payment receipt number payment mode and receive by. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven fields. So we need to create seven variables. So let's start from the first one. Let's say date. I'll mention a date of payment and then I'll click on save. It says are you assigning it to an all value? I'm like yes. Similarly, you can go to add again and choose to create a variable for received from click on save again and let's add it for amount for payment. So I'm going to add it for amount for payment. Similarly, I'll search received number payment mode received by. I'll do it for payment mode and received by. So as you can see, I've created all the required variables. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this PDF integration command and then I'll drag extract form fields and then what I'll do is I'll again browse let's say first PDF and then I'll click on add. Now over here you can add the details. So for example, I want to extract the date, right? So I'll just drag area over here. Right click over here. Go to add field mention date of payment. 
select the variable so that is date of payment over here click on ok similarly i'll just mention received from select the variable let's say received from and click on ok similarly i'll do it for amount drag over here go to add choose the variable amount click on ok similarly goes for off renting five seater that's for payment go to add field mention for payment select a variable let's say for payment click on ok now i'm going to go over here mention the received number so drag it over here go to add field again mention received number select a variable let's say received number click on ok similarly i'm going to do it for payment mode select a variable payment mode click on ok and again received by add field mention received by click on variable choose receive by click on ok then i'll click on save now again i'll save this task now what has basically happened is you have defined what data has to be extracted now what you have to do is you have to store the extracted data into the excel sheet so for that what you'll do is you'll first drag the set cell command from the excel command so i'll just drag the set cell command over here and now what you'll do is you'll mention what value has to be stored right so let's say you know initially we want to store in the same column that we retrieve let's say date receive from amount form payment receipt number payment mode and receive by right so i'll just mention cell value to be control f2 and then i'll mention the date of payment variable and click on save now once that is done you have to move one cell towards the right to store the next value of the same pdf so you choose go to cell and then you move one cell to the right now similarly you'll have to do it for the other six variables also so let's just do that so i'll just again drag and drop the set cell action press on control f2 and let's say we choose received from click on insert save now again go to go to cell move one cell to right click on save Similarly, I drag and drop the set cell action. Let's say in this time we want to choose amount. So I'll press on Control F2, amount, click on save, and then again I choose go to cell and choose one cell to write. Similarly, I again choose the set cell action and then press on Control F2. Let's say you know we want to next choose for payment. So I'll click on for payment, click on insert, save, and then choose go to cell and move one cell to right click on save after that i want to choose the receive number payment mode and receive by so i'll just again drag set cell go to control f2 and then mention receive number click on insert save go to cell one cell to right click on save similarly drag set cell then control f2 then let's say payment mode insert save then again go to go to cell and move one cell to right after that let's say we want to again drag and choose the final variable that is basically received by click on insert save and choose go to cell and choose one cell below now i'm choosing one cell below over here that's because you know you've just finished storing the data for one invoice now if you have to do it for hundreds of invoices present in the same folder then you have to go one cell below and then to the beginning of the row to store the data of the next invoice right so that's the reason i'm choosing one cell below and then i'll again drag and drop go to cell and choose beginning of the row click on save after that what i'll do is i'll drag and drop this end loop at the bottom and then over here let me tell you that you know we have defined the automation script for just one pdf that is car rental received one now instead we want to do it for any number of pdfs present in the folder what you have to do is you have to edit this particular activity and then what you have to do is you have to remove this car rental received one and mention the variable file name so i'll search for file name click on insert and save so all the files with the extension dot pdf will be taken into account and then all the data from those invoices will be scraped and put into the excel file now our next agenda for today's demo was that we wanted to send an email to anybody with the attachment of this particular file that is the output database file so for that what you do is first you have to save the spreadsheet and then you have to close the spreadsheet so i'll just drag and drop save over here and then click on save and then finally i'll close the spreadsheet then what you have to do is you have to send an email right so i'll just search for the send email option over here drag and drop it over here and then i'll mention the from and the to address let's say i'm sending it to myself 
So I'll just mention my email address to from and to address. So I'm just going to mention the same email ID in both the addresses that is from and to. Let's say we mention the subject to be invoices data and then we mention the attachment. So attachment should be our invoice output. So I'll mention and click on open. So over here you can mention text also. So let's say you know we mentioned I PFA regards Sahiti Kapagantula, right? And then I click on save. So now what I'll do is I'll just save my automation. So let's say I mention it invoices and then I click on save and then I just execute this task. But before I execute this task, let me just close all my files and folders related to this. And then what I'll do is I'll just execute this task now. So let's wait for the task to be executed. So as you can see the runtime window has opened and our simple invoice output file has been read and automatically the data is getting stored from the invoices that were present in that particular folder. So over there I had around 10 invoices so 10 invoices or data will be stored. After that you can see that you know automatically the spreadsheet got saved closed and then let's just check if I've got the email or not. So I'll just open back my outlook. Let's just go to unread. Let's refresh this and you can see that got an email which clearly shows so this is basically the text I mentioned in automation anyway. This was basically my file that I sent as an attachment after saving the data. So let's just open this file also to check whether the data has been stored into the file or not. So as you can see the data got automatically stored and this particular Excel sheet has been sent as an attachment. So we are I sent it to myself to show you. You can send it to any number of people you wish to. So guys this was about invoice processing. Now one more thing that I would like to tell you over here is that basically that you know you can schedule this task. So when I say scheduling what I mean that in a company or in a large scale industry thousands of invoices come every day. So to keep a track of all the data and to send an email to yourself what you can simply do is that you know you can schedule this particular task at a specific time every day so that all the new invoices in the folder will be read and the data will be automatically stored into the Excel sheet. And the new version of the Excel sheet will be attached in the email and will be sent to the users. So that's how guys basically you can automate invoice processing. Now let's move forward with our next use case that is payroll automation. Now payroll automation is also one of the most popular use cases of RPA. That's because you know the payroll automation requires repetitive processing of payrolls by following company rules and regulations. While modern payroll softwares provide a good solution for this process, some companies still rely too much on legacy systems to be able to make the switch to the modern payroll softwares. So instead what you can do is you can make a bot validate payrolls. Maybe you can have a document or a checklist, you know, which has the company rules and regulations and then you can process the payroll based on the validation. So if it does not satisfy the rules, then maybe the payroll should not move forward else it should go forward. So these kind of tasks can be automated with the help of bots. So you can basically feed the bots with the rules and regulations of the company and then it will be the bots responsibility to check whether the payroll process is getting validated or not. So guys that was about payroll automation. Now let's move forward with the next and our final use case for this session that is customer support emails. Now every company has a customer support team or team which takes care of all the queries for related to the product of the company or the company itself. Now this particular team is quite necessary to maintain the client relationships with the company and also to make sure that you know the company's brand value stands good and then more and more customers come to the company. Now this particular team works on various kind of queries, right? So the queries are not just definite. They have various kinds of queries like for example, let's say, you know, we have a product. So some customers can send them a mail saying that, you know, our product is not working or product is not good. Maybe it failed to work as I expected. Maybe the price is a problem or maybe they haven't got their refund and so on. So the customer support team has to deal with n number of mails and there are humongous amount of varieties of them. Now in such scenario what happens is that a manual employee cannot reply to all those emails single handedly right. So any email that is sent to the customer support team must definitely have a reply back immediately to make sure there's a good client relationship with the company. So to make sure that you know there's a good client relationship with the company automatically whenever you send a mail you automatically see that you know within minutes you get a reply back saying that you know the issue will be taken forward or will be looking into the issue as soon as possible and so on. Now all these emails definitely a manual employee doesn't sit and send them automatically. Instead maybe you know it is an automated response which is sent to all the clients so that you know the client relationship is good and also a backup database has to be mentioned that you know some specific ticket related to some product has come and that has to be resolved. 
So that particular mail thread should also be present. So you can just automate this task with the help of a bot by designing in any tool. So the bot will automatically send a reply to all the users whose mails are coming to the customer support team saying that you know I have so and so issues so they can just get an automated response that hi from XYZ company will be looking into your issue as soon as possible. So to show you how you can automate that task I have considered a scenario where I'm going to send automated reply to the emails which have specific text mentioned in the subject line. So the text can be either let's say issues problem discussion or maybe any other words. Now before I move forward by showing you the solution let me just discuss the workflow before that. So to automate this specific task we'll be using UiPath. So initially what we'll do is that we'll build a data table and then we'll read the sheet. I'm going to maintain a sheet which has the specific values which have to be identified in the subject line. For example, let's say you know we have the word issues in the Excel sheet and that particular word issues is also seen in the subject line of let's say you know top 50 emails. Then automatically an email will be sent to the user saying that we'll be looking into the issue as soon as possible. So that's what I'm going to do. After that you have to read and send emails and remove few columns from the data table. So I'm going to tell you why I'm going to do that. And finally I'm going to store the data in an Excel sheet and execute the automation. So let's just do that. So I'll just shift back to my UI path studio. Now I'll go to start create a process. Let's say we mention it to be customer support and click on create. All right. So as you can see my project has been created. Now before I move forward with the activities in UI path, let me just show you the Excel sheet where I have the text mentioned. So I'll just open the Excel sheet. So as you can see the Excel sheet has open. So it basically has four columns that is the issue name, email ID, our ticket number and subject. So over here I've put issues name as issues problem and I've put few technologies names so that because I have emails related to it. So basically now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to automate this task of you know for every row that is for every text present over here all the emails would be read. Let's say we will consider top 100 emails then top 100 emails will be read from my email ID and then even if one email consists of the subject line matching to either issues problem Python artificial intelligence or big data then automatically a support email will be sent back to them. Well guys I'm considering Python artificial intelligence and big data because you know I don't have the much keywords whose mails are present in my email ID presently. But yes, if you are from the support team or maybe if you have few common words that come generally, then you can definitely go forward and add those keywords. So this is completely your perspective of how you want to automate this task. Let's say we consider more like, you know, discussed and let's say I mention it to be intelligence and over here also, let's say I mention it to be webinar. Right, so I have few keywords over here. So with here what I'll do now is I'll automate this task and then when I finish automating this task you'll observe that you know the issue column will go and we'll just have email ID ticket number and subject that will put it in a different file so that there's no confusion between both the files. So I hope I'm clear. So now let's just shift back to my UI path studio and now what I'll do is initially I'll just drag a flow chart so that the sequence is clear to you. So I'll drag and drop a flow chart over here. And then what I'll do is I'll just first drag the build data table activity. So we'll use this activity to build the data table for all the four columns present in the Excel sheet. That is issue name, email ID, ticket number, and subject. So we'll mention the same. So I'll connect this flowchart start sequence to build data table activity. Then I'll double click over here, double click over here again, and then I'll edit this option. So let's say our first column name is issue name. Let's just edit that particular column now. I'll mention issue name over here click on OK. Similarly I'll edit over here go back over here choose email ID and mention it back over here. Let's say make it to be string click on OK. Again I want to add a new column so I'll click over here choose ticket number go back over here paste it over here click on OK. And finally I'll add one more column that is the subject column to keep a track of all the subjects of the emails that we are storing and then I'll click on OK. Right, so these are the four columns that I have in my Excel sheet also that is the issue name, email ID, ticket number and subject. I'll close this row and click on OK. So this is basically my data table. Now over here I have to mention an output variable to store all the data from the Excel sheet to this particular data table. So I'll press on control K. Let's say we mention support table as the output variable. Now I'll go back to the flow chart and then I'll drag and drop the Excel application scope activity. So let me just search for that and drag and drop it over here. I'll connect this and I'll double click over here mention the workbook path. 
So over here you can see that you know I have just one workbook path present in my UI path folder that is the rules that was basically this file and now once you have mentioned the workbook path you have to next read the data from the Excel file right so to do that you have to drag and drop the read range activity let me just drag and drop the read range activity since we have already mentioned the workbook path that's not the correct one let's drag and drop this one and let's say we mentioned the sheet and the range right so over here we are considering sheet one and then let's say it has infinite range right so i'll mention infinite that is basically double quotations over here now over here i'll have to mention the data table variable that is again support table right so that's basically so that you know whatever data has been stored in a data table has to be read from the excel sheet so that's what is happening over here now what you have to do is you have to automate the task of reading the emails right so for that what you do is you drag a sequence first and then let's say we rename the sequence to read and send emails after that I'll double click over here and then what I'll do is I'll drag the get outlook mail message activity so let me just search for that drag and drop it over here over here in the property section of get outlook mail message activity I want to read it from the mail folder that is basically the inbox folder and then once the emails are read I want to mark them as read and then I want to read 100 emails right in the output variable you have to mention a variable to store the output of all the emails to be read that is basically I've mentioned over your messages now if you observe the data type of these messages it's really clear that you know it is of type list of mail message now what you have to do is for each mail that is being read you have to perform a set of actions so for that you drag the for each loop so I'll search for for each loop drag and drop it over here and then I'll change the type argument to be system dot net dot mail messages I'll choose mail message and click on OK now after that for each item in the messages that is basically our mails right so for each mail in the mail messages what I want to do is I want to perform few actions right so that's what you'll mention over here so for each mail and mail messages you extract the email ID ticket number and subject right so initially what you'll do is you'll assign all these three factors to different variables so for that what you'll do is you'll drag and drop the assign activity and then let's say we create a variable email ID and then we assign it to mail dot sender that is and then address and then we convert it to lower so we're converting it to lower so that you know there's no confusion between uppercase lowercase and so on so basically our sender address is being stored in the email id variable similarly i'll drag and drop another assign activity in which i'll assign a random number to generate the ticket number so every time the loop runs and then it identifies some specific text let's say issues from the excel sheet and that issues keyword matches some email in the text line then automatically a ticket number will be generated right so to generate that what you do is initially create a variable let's say ticket number and then over here we generate a random number so that is new random and then let's say next and over here let's say you mention the range 1 to 10,000 after that you again have to assign the subject to another variable so for that I'll press on control K let's say we mentioned the variable to be email subject and then we'll mention mail dot subject to string so I'm basically converting the subject to a string now what you have done till now is you basically have read the data from the Excel sheet and then you have assigned variables to identify the email address subject and generate a random ticket number now next what you have to do is for each row in the data table that is for basically you'll have to match all the rows present in the data table right that is basically all the issues to the email subject line right so to do that you have to use the for each row so I'll search for for each row drag and drop it over here so for each row in the support table I want to perform a set of actions right so those set of actions is basically I want to match the condition from the email subject to the Excel sheet if the words match then we want to set an automated reply to that particular sender so for that what we'll do is we'll drag an if else clause over here in the body section of this activity now once you drag the if condition in the condition area you have to mention the condition so that is basically mail dot subject so for every mail we want to read a subject and then we want to check whether you know a subject has any keyword which matches to the keywords that we mentioned in our excel file so for that what we'll do is we'll mention mail dot subject dot contains and then we'll mention row and in brackets we'll mention issue name so I'll just put it in double quotes and type in issue name and then put it to to string 
so basically i'm converting the subject that is basically for every subject line that we get we are converting all that text to a string now once you drag the if condition you have to mention the condition in the condition area so our condition is basically to match the subject keywords to any of the keyword present in the excel file so for that what i'll do is i'll type in mail dot subject dot contains and then we'll mention the row name so that is basically our issue name right so i'll mention it in double quotes and then i'll mention two strings so basically i'm converting the row name to a string and then if the condition satisfies what we want to do is we want to send an outlook mail message so basically we want to send a reply so for that i'll just drag and drop in the send outlook mail message activity now once i drag and drop the send outlook mail message activity so in the two section i'll mention the email id which will basically consist of my email address of the sender so the subject let's say i have chosen what subject i have to mention so i have put it in my notepad plus plus so that is basically edureka support ticket and then i'll basically mention the ticket number that is randomly generated and the email subject right so i'll just copy this back over here and then what i'll do is i'll change the variables right because over here there are different variables for ticket number and email subject now similarly in the body section also i have put it in my notepad plus plus so i'll just copy it back over here and then what i'll do is i'll just you know edit this part right so to edit that part what i'll do is i'll just go back so this is basically my text that i've mentioned and then that is we will new line is to go to new line then what i'll do is i'll have to change my you know ticket number variable over here because this is not the variable that is used right so i'll change ticket number over here so this is basically the text i've mentioned i've mentioned hi there thanks for contacting us and so on this is basically our process of reading and sending the emails now what you have to do is you have to go back to the flow chart connect it to this excel application scope and this shows few errors so let's just see what error is it so i closed the bracket at the wrong place so i have to close it over here right so once i close that i think the error will be resolved all right this one more error which says new random dot next is not classified that is because random dot next is not defined so basically i forgot to mention the function sign over here so that is basically we want to use a random function right so we have to basically mention the brackets over there and i think it will be resolved after that all right it says tim in 30 day to type cannot be assigned this is int and this is just you know generic value so we'll change this to int and then the errors will be resolved now they it seems there's one more error just just check which error is that all right it says that you know edureka support ticket cannot convert string to double so what we'll do is we'll just change all the variables to basically generic values so that it's easy for all of us to work with it so i'll just change this to generic value and then let's just you know go back to the flow chart and connect it so that means all our errors are resolved the next step that you have to do is you have to assign the email id ticket number subject back to the row so that you know the data is being stored into the excel sheet so again you go back to assign activity drag and drop it over here and then what you do is you mention row 1 and then you mention email id similarly you put row 2 row 3 so i'll drag and drop it over here so in row 2 we want to mention the ticket number so i'll mention ticket number and in row 3 i want to store the subject so i'll choose email subject now once that is done i'll go back to my flow chart and then what i'll do is i have to remove a data column right so for example in the data set that we wanted to store basically we only wanted to store the email id ticket number in the subject so we wanted to remove this issue name column so we have to do that so to do that what you have to do is you have to choose this option of remove data column drag and drop it over here choose the data column that you want to remove you want to remove the zeroth column that is basically this column and then we'll mention the data table name that is support table after that we'll just connect this to over here let me just connect it and then what i'll do is i'll drag and drop an excel application scope now this is to basically write the data back into the excel file so i'll just drag and drop it over here and let's say you know i put it into a new workbook right so i'll just create one more rules copy i'll click on open and then over here i'll choose the option of write range i'll mention sheet 2 because we want to copy to sheet 2 and let's say we started from a1 itself and then we mention the data table name that is support table after that you can just go back to your flow chart and that's how you finish your designing of your automation task
So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to my inbox and then let me just show you that in some of the hundred emails I have few subject lines which says artificial intelligence discussion queries to be discussed facing issues Python and then others. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click on debug. Once I click on debug, you'll see that you know the execution has started, right? So automatically the data is getting extracted from our sample Excel sheet where we have all the issues present. And then you will see if you go back to our inbox folder, you'll see that you know automatically all the emails are getting read. So basically, I've mentioned over here the top 100 emails have to be read. So all the emails are getting read. So let's just wait for that to happen. And then let's wait for it to execute it again. So it's continuing our execution. So once all the emails are read, what would happen is that automated replies will be sent and then the data will be stored into our Excel sheet, right? So let's just go back to our debug section and let's wait for it to happen. So as you can see, my execution has ended. So I'll just shift back to my inbox, show you the sent mails and then let's just refresh this again. All those emails which have few specific words that we mentioned in the sheet. I've got automated replies like you know hi there. Thanks for contacting a support labs and so on right so automatically a random number has been generated that will be basically our ticket number and the specified text is mentioned that is basically the body of message that you mentioned in the UI path studio now similarly if you just go back to your file open rules copy that is basically the file where you store the data you'll automatically see that you know the email ID the ticket number and the subject line has been stored. So guys, these were just for few emails that you know I considered you can do it at a large scale when you're working at a organization, right? So you can definitely automate the task of you know sending immediate replies to customers having the same text that you wish to send for all the customers, right? So that's how guys basically you can automate tasks in RPA. Well, I showed you different kinds of projects that are most commonly used in the field of RPA. If you have any other projects on your mind and you want us to basically show you how you can automate those tasks, you can definitely comment down in the comment section below. Until then, that's all from our side today. So guys, with this, we come to an end of the session of RPA projects. I hope you like this session and I hope you found it informative. So if you have any further queries related to the session, please comment in the comment section below. Thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!